So in the previous videos, we looked at QTP checkpoints, QTP parameterization, and also object identification. So in this video, before we actually start writing our own scripts, and before we start writing descriptive programming with VB scripting, we will explore QTP output values. So what do output values exactly, exactly do for us? Basically, when we insert a checkpoint, let's look at an example. So this is a mortgage calculator, mortgagecalculator.org.org. So when we put a checkpoint somewhere, it basically checks for if something does or does not exist. So if I put a checkpoint for this monthly payment, then this monthly payment gets populated for whatever information we put here based on the home value, interest, loan rate, etc. So when we look at buying a house or a new car, there's a value for the house, the loan amount, the interest rate. So based on the interest rate and the credit scores and reports, the monthly payment gets changed. So if I put a checkpoint here, what we have learned earlier, if I put a standard or text checkpoint in this area, this will check if um, $1,049.98 does exist or does not exist. That's what it will do. It will check if it exists or not, and it will check for a constant value. So what if I change my interest rate and my loan amount so I will have a different monthly payment. So let's look at that. Let's put in a new loan amount from 90,000 to um, 60,000 and change the interest rate from 4.8 to 6.0 and click on calculate. So if I have different sets of input data and so my monthly payment gets changed so if I have a checkpoint here, the checkpoint will fail because the checkpoint will look for $1,049.98. So checkpoints are only good for checking for a constant value to check if something exists or not. So checkpoints check if something exists or not, but we have something called output value. So insert. If we go to insert and output value, we have something very similar to checkpoints. We have standard checks and text checkpoints. So we have standard output values and text output values just like we have checkpoints. Output values checks for what exists within this area or within this application. Checkpoints, again, I'll repeat, checkpoints check for a certain thing, a certain value. Output values will check for what exists here instead of a certain value. So a checkpoint checks if something exists, but an output value will check for what exists, for what exists here. So another quick example would be, let me open up my calculator in my windows. If I put one plus one and I click on total, I should get two, right? So output value will capture, basically capture the output regardless of input. If I put one plus two and enter. And one plus three and enter. If I have an output, it will check 
the output value, if I have an output value, it will check basically, check for whatever output I get. It's just like your computer, you input something and you get an output. Just like your monitor, your monitor is an output. Your printer is another example of an output. You, you enter some text, type a document, hit print, and it prints something for you. So that's an output for you. So in these cases, output values come very handy. If you want to check some output of a certain area, the output using output values in QTP is the best solution for that. So let's look at a quick example of this. Let me close all of my browsers and close my calculator. Let's save this test as QTP QTP output value. And let's start recording. Click on record and I simply open up a browser and I'll go to navigate to mortgage calculator dot org I intentionally type it in now now let's change the home value to say 100,000 Let's change the loan amount to 80,000. So I'm putting $80,000 down, or $20,000 cash down. Let's say the interest rate is 4.8 and the loan term to 10 years. As you can see right now, by default, I have monthly payment, which is $1,654.55. This will get changed based on whatever data, input data, we have here. So I click on calculate. Let's see what happens. If I go down, scroll down, so I see that I have a different monthly payment now, which is $944.89. Now, I want to capture this result. I want to capture this output. I want to capture this output value of this monthly payment based on the input data. So, let's go back to QTP. Yes, everything got recorded. The home value, interest rate, loan term, and everything. Now, let's try to put a quick output value for my monthly payment. If I click on insert, output value, standard output value, and with my hand sign, I click on this monthly payment, and I click OK. And if I hit OK here, I'll get a notification, a warning message. Let's see that. So it says you must select at least one property to output. So you have to tell QTP what to check. So in this case, in this case, I want to check the inner text of this element. So I check on inner text. Inner text is basically the value we see for monthly payment. Let's click on modify. And by default, it will, just like a checkpoint, just like a parameter, it will store that value. And remember, output value is stored during runtime only. That means after the run got executed, after the test completed, that run, after the test completed that run, you won't see that value anymore. This is only a runtime value. It will store that runtime value 
in your global sheet by default. It will store that in a column named this. So let's change that. Let's name it something we can understand and easily identify. Let's say monthly underscore payment. I'll click on OK. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. If you if you're watching this for the start, first time, you may be getting a little confused. When I was looking at it for the first time, I trust me, I also got very confused, but it will get easier. It'll get easier and more understandable as you go along with it. So I have this monthly payment global sheet. So I am telling QTP to capture this result and put it in my global sheet and put it in a column called monthly payment. Okay, I click on OK and and that's it. Let me close the browser. Let me stop the recording. If I click on as you can see, a new, as soon as I created an output value, a new column got generated in the global sheet. A new column called monthly payment. All right, so during the runtime QTP, we'll capture that value, monthly payment value, and it will put it here, under this column, under this row. The reason it is blank now, like I said, it will put that value during runtime only, not after that. So let's try to figure out if we can see that value happening, getting populated here or not. So in the next video, let's continue with understanding output values and how they will work in this particular test. Thank you.